All right, let's demonstrate functional manipulation now. Uh, let's start with the inferior lateral pterygoid muscle. So <clears throat> what does that muscle do? Does everybody remember? Inferior lateral pterygoid is the primary protruder of the jaw. So <clears throat> I'm going to have him do the bulldog, called the bulldog. Can you do the bulldog, act like a bulldog? Just prick it. There you go. And back, forward, and back. Okay, so in order for us to determine that there's something wrong with the inferior lateral pterygoid, it's got to meet two criteria. It has to have pain upon its action, and then it has to have pain upon its stretch. And both of the pterygoids are weird because the stretch for both of them is that hard pack position where you clench down hard. That actually stretches them both. So to test the action of the inferior lateral pterygoid, we're just going to stabilize the chin. Go ahead and bulldog for me. Straight out and back. Okay, push. Any pain with that? No. Okay, good. Okay, so there's no pain. Let's pretend now he's symptomatic, so let's do it again. Up, bulldog, and back. Does that hurt a little? Yeah. Okay. So that's one half of the criteria. Now, <clears throat> the next criteria is go ahead and open a little bit for me, and now bite down hard for me. Does that have, that creates pain, doesn't it? Yeah, it hurts. Okay. So, now you've got a double criteria. You have pain on the action of the muscle, which is protrusion of the mandible, and you have pain in that hard pack position, which is also, uh, which is the stretch of the muscle. Now, these are, th these, these get very complicated because we haven't talked about intraarticular problems with the joint yet. But there is a way to test this one more time, and I'm going to get a tongue depressor and let's say he's got let's say he's got pain on the left or on the right side here so if I put a tongue depressor between the last couple molars it's going to leave some slack in the muscle so it won't be stretched and if it doesn't hurt that means it's inferior lateral pterygoid because we're not stretching it fully so go ahead and open for me okay and then slowly bite down See how I have that kind of at an angle? Now that feels okay? Yeah, good. Okay, let go for me. Okay, so that's positive for, um, for inferior lateral pterygoid. So there, there's three tests. If you get this one, if you draw this, it's, there's three tests for it. So it's protrusion against resistance. Let's do that again, do the bulldog. Okay, does that have pain? Yeah. Yes. And then the other one is go ahead and bite down hard. Okay, that hard pack position. Does that have pain? Yes. Okay. And then open for me and bite down. How does that feel? No pain? No pain. Good. So that is positive for the inferior lateral pterygoid. So that you would treat that and you'll learn all about that in the next quarter or two. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Okay, the next one we're going to test is superior lateral pterygoid muscle. This is a very important muscle. Remember this one? It's the one that actually inserts into the disc in the mandibular condyle and stabilizes it during the gait of your mouth, opening and closing of your mouth. So it's super important and it can become uh, symptomatic and refer pain to the area of the TMJ. So to test this one, we have to know its actions. And its primary action, it's actually an elevator of the jaw, especially in the near the closed pack position. Uh, there's other elevators, of course, as well. But the first test will be elevation to see if it's painful. Now, we don't want to go to the closed pack position, the, the hard bite position, or the clenching position, because that's the stretch for this muscle. Remember, lateral and medial pterygoid, or both fibers of lateral, the inferior and superior lateral pterygoid the stretch is, is the hard pack position, so we don't want to go there. So what I'm going to have him do is open his mouth. Well, he's symptomatic on the right side. Put the tongue depressor obliquely again. Bite down slowly. And that causes pain? Yeah. Okay. All right, so that's stage one is positive. But it could be his masseter muscle or you know, anything else that elevates the jaw. So we have to differentiate. Now the closed pack position, we're going to have him bite again down. So bite, does that cause pain? Yeah. Okay, so 
the stretch causes pain, the muscle contraction causes pain. Now how do you differentiate that from the masseter muscle, let's say? This is the third part of the test. I'm going to have him open his jaw slowly. Go ahead and open as wide as you can. And does that cause pain? No. No. So there you have it. If that was a masseter problem, uh, or even a temporalis problem, it would also cause pain because that you're stretching those elevator muscles. But this, the, the superior pterygoid, superior lateral pterygoid, doesn't uh, respond at all. Uh, when you when you depress the mandible or open the mouth. So there you have it. Okay, now we're going to analyze range of motion. And there's active and passive range of motion. Uh, most believe that active range of motion really doesn't tell us a whole lot other than we can analyze the gait of the jaw or how it how it swings as it opens and closes and it should be pretty much in line. The incisor teeth should not go out of alignment too much. So it's very simple. You just get over the head of the table like this, stabilize him. Go ahead and open your mouth slowly all the way as far as you can go. Okay, and then close the mouth. Okay. Everybody's going to have a little bit of wobble, but you're, gonna, you're looking for like a C-shaped deviation or an S-shaped deviation. Sometimes the jaw will swing way out, but it'll return. So as, it, as he's opening it, you'll get a big swing to, let's say, the left, but it'll come back. So what, what could that indicate? That could indicate a problem uh, with the disc uh, or maybe some degeneration where the jaw is swinging to get around a defect in the disc, but once it gets around it, it snaps back into line. Now another problem is if the jaw goes to the left and stays to the left, it doesn't come back to midline, that indicates a muscle problem because it's the muscles tight and just not letting it go. If it's a lateral uh, depressor, or I'm sorry, a lateral elevator like the masseter muscle, if this masseter muscle is bad on the left, it'll tend to pull the jaw to the left. If it's the medial pterygoid, if he's sore on this side, you can't really tell if it's the if it's the masseter or the medial pterygoid, remember the medial pterygoid is on the medial side of the ramus of the jaw. The, the muscle, the jaw will tend to swing to the other way and stay in that direction. So that is all you need to know for the gait. If I ask you to demonstrate, uh, to test his gait, that's all you have to do. And tell me a little bit about it. Okay, in this section, we are still analyzing gait. Uh, we're talking, we we're talking about active and passive ranges of motion. And we are going to measure gait right now. We're going to say that a normal measurement is about 55 millimeters. So everybody, even a child, a six-year-old child can, can open to 40 millimeters. And even the elderly can usually open that far. So anything less than 40 millimeters, and you should remember that number, anything less than 40 millimeters is a problem with, with the gait. Okay, so we're going to have him open. I have, there's many ways to do this. I have a little device. I'll bring this into the camera here. Uh, it measures this two-point discrimination. I don't know if that's going to focus or not. But it measures two-point discrimination uh, very precisely. So let's go ahead, Chris, and go ahead and open your mouth as slowly, but as far as you can go. I'll set it at 50. And you measure it from the tip of these top incisors to the bottom of the lower incisors. As far as you can go. You obviously have to be very careful. We don't want to stab him with this thing. Although these are plastic tines. Okay. So he is 52 millimeters. So no problem. So. You can, another way you can do it, and for class, if I ask you to do this, you can take three fingers, your three, your ring, index, and uh, your index, middle, and ring finger. Go ahead and open for me. As far as you can, and you should easily be able to insert three fingers. And that for this exam, this is, this is good enough. So that's normal. Okay. All right. Okay, this section we're going to talk about range of motion, how to do that. And this is very, 
very simple and straightforward. What are the planes of motion? You have, obviously, you have opening and closing of the jaw, so that's called depression and elevation. And then you have a lateral kind of sliding. Can you slide your jaw lateral like that? That's called lateral trusion. Lateral trusion. So a little more complicated with the left joint. Go ahead and go to the left. Laterally trude. So that's lateral trusion. So this joint is medial trusion or medial truding. Okay, so those are words you should become familiar with. And then the other motion is the bulldog, protrusion. So go ahead and stick your, do the bulldog for me. There you go. And then go ahead and push it back. Okay, so those are the ranges of motion. So let's do them actively first. Go ahead and open your mouth as far as you can for me. And close your mouth. Okay, so he has full. And then we, in the, another section here, I showed you how to use the three fingers to kind of eyeball it. So he's got normal motion there. So now go laterally to the side, do the, like that. Good, and that should, if I remember right, I'll probably correct it on the tape, but it was about 10, it should be, I think, 12 millimeters in both directions. You know, you can measure that if you want. I can, uh, I can grab, a, I have all kinds of measuring toys here. But I can just kind of put this, go ahead, go to the side for me. And I can line it up between his incisors, and that's well over 10 millimeters. That's probably, that's probably 14, 15 millimeters. So that's the way you can do that. During the exam, um, I would just use something like this, or you could even use this and kind of eyeball it. So it should be, I think it was 12, but I'll correct that on the tape. Go ahead to the so other side for me. Okay, yeah, that's, that's fine. Okay, he's got about 15 millimeters, so that's good. Now, protrusion is a little bit harder, so do the bulldog. You're just going to have to kind of eyeball that. That's always exactly the same as lateral trusion. So that's, you know, that's about 12 millimeters or so. You don't have to measure that one for me. And that covers it. Okay, let's move on to the next segment.